to start to record today's workshop so that we'll have it for others to see and slideshow. Are you seeing my screen? Not yet. No, because it would help if I say share screen, huh? What a concept. <laughs> there you go, share screen. <laughs> oh. Okay. There you go. You're in. Okay, there we go. All right, welcome to the third workshop. So this is our final <laughs> workshop of training with me, Twanda Hill. There's my information. Write it down, keep it. Um, call me if you get you stuck take, with anything. Excuse me, Twanda, did you already take roll? No, I didn't. I didn't. I like to do it at different times <laughs> to keep y'all jumping. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And, and actually, because all of you have your names on, when the meeting ends in my report, it will actually show me who was here versus if it all said admin before, I couldn't tell who was here. So just wow. little tips along the way. Okay, so okay, so yeah, we'll talk, we'll do the manual at the end. Okay, so let's get going on Facebook. So um, it's not just for kids. Many of us just were like, I am not going to do Facebook. I'm not going to do it. And then you realize that if you wanted to stay connected to your grandkids and your kids, everybody was on Facebook over the years. Um, back when I was living in Seattle and having gatherings and people over to the house. If you weren't on social media, one click, I can invite you over for an event. You didn't get invited to that event, <laughs> which is horrible, but that's how um, it is. And then that's also, um, um, also that, that, you know, that's just how, how it was. I, I don't think I'm as cutthroat nowadays, but Sometimes we get so busy that we're trying to think of the simplest way to connect with each other. Um, so anyhow, Facebook really can be your friend. It's a great way for folks to share pictures. Anthony, you were talking about you got friends in Chicago and on birthdays, it gives you a reminder that um, someone, one of your friends is their birthday. And so it's a great, it's a great tool for keeping connected and and seeing some of those old friends, I, I often, um, we have a good time when I see somebody from college, you know, and you're, we're looking at their grandkids now and it, it's a lot of fun. So anyhow, today's training, we're gonna talk about how to create an account, um, set up your profile, um, posting, finding friends, um, interactions on Facebook. We're gonna talk a little about safety and privacy and then Facebook Messenger and video chat. And I really want to stress that one because like I said, that one's a real simple way to set up a standard meeting with friends, family, where you guys can connect and um, you don't have to worry about having a Zoom password and a login, y'all can go on and you can actually do some of the things that we're doing on Zoom, okay? All righty, so when it comes to creating a, an account, it, those of you who don't have an app, you should, uh, who don't have an account, on your desktop, there is a Facebook icon that you can click on and it should bring you to the uh, homepage of Facebook. And so if you don't have an account, you can create an account. And if you do have an account, guess what? You can just log in. The cool thing about Facebook is that once you do log in, you can pretty much stay logged in even when you close out of that browser. It doesn't necessarily log you out. You have to manually log yourself out. But if you change devices, you have to log back in. Um, a lot of times it will let me stay logged in on multiple devices. So if you log in on one, it'll let you log in on another? Yes. So I don't have to log in on this one? And if I'm, um, cause I'm always logged in on my, on my iPhone. Yeah, so unless you wanna check the information on your laptop, you don't have to log in on that one, on this one. I just, I just think that anytime we're doing stuff um, where we're having people and videos and messages, I just like to do, personally, my eyesight's not good enough to be looking at that little bitty phone. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so that's why I like having it on multiple devices. Um, I have a, um, a Kindle that, you know, if I'm traveling, sometimes I don't want to take my laptop with me. So I'll take the Kindle and um, I can check it on the Kindle. I just like to be able to check it wherever I need to. And like I said, um, you, it does not log you out until you log yourself out. Yeah, because I, I also log in on my uh, laptop. I mean, not on my laptop, but on my uh, tablet. Okay, wonderful. And um, if you don't have the icon on your um, desktop for Facebook, you'll open up your browser and you'll just do www.facebook.com. Okay? So it's real easy to sign up. Um, one, they're going to ask your name. Uh, your mobile number or email, a password, birth date, male, female, and sign up. And here again, it asks for a password. So I strongly encourage everyone to have a master book that they keep their passwords in so that you know how to find it when you need it. Because nothing is worse than when you've lost your password. Yeah, Once you create that account at the end of the process, they they will send a confirmation to you at either your email or your phone number, your mobile phone. And this is just to ensure that it's a valid account application. So when it comes to setting up a profile for yourself, the whole goal is to let the world know who you are. You can share things like your life, your accomplishments, education, um, edit your profile, you know, when it comes to photos, photos display at a certain size. And I know um, the profile photos, which is what follows you around the internet, wherever you go, it's that square, the small photo, it's 180 pixels by 180 pixels. And as you can see, I tell you down here, 180 pixels equals 2.4 inches. When you're working on the laptop, just because uh, we're, we're working on, in technology and when you're working on documents, we are, and in the US, we do everything by inches, but other countries and cultures may use pixels or points, things like that. And so if you ever had to convert over to find out how many pixels or how many points equal an inch, you can do what? go to your Google browser and ask for a converter from pixels to inches and it'll bring it up. So that's why being able to have access to the web and understanding what you're doing, um, you know, there's always a way to find the right answer. So this is what my personal page looks like. As you can see, that's my fabulous uh, grandson. This is called a cover photo. And this profile photo is me standing here thinking I'm bad, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't put a big biography for it because it's this is a personal page. Fun person, mother, grandmother, sister, auntie, loves family and believes in living life fully. You know, that sums me up in a sentence. And so um, if I wanted to change my cover photo, I just edit my cover photo. If I wanted to change my profile photo, I just click on that camera and it allows me to add a new photo. And so I actually pulled some other pages. Oh, who would that be? Is that Elizabeth Morris? That looks like your personal page. That is. That's your beautiful granddaughter. It is. And are these flowers you grew on your garden? Of course. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Visionary artists restyling and repurposing custom couture. Okay, so just simple, easy. Um, that's who she is. Renee Hollingsworth Bush, she was in the class yesterday. Just being a Mimi to my six grandkids. I'm you know, here. Oh, you're here, Renee. See, look, I pulled you up. <laughs> <laughs> got you, got you. You are on point. So if you're looking to post the photos to your profile, um, who was on yesterday when we showed how to add images? Because if you click on the add the, the camera icon, it's going to open up to your and give you the option to pull a photo off of your desktop. 
So that's why it's important to have um, understand your folders and we know where your pictures are. This here is um, the ARTH website, I mean, Facebook page. And if you see, theirs is a little different because it's a business page. And so it has their logo. It has a cover, a cover profile a photo as well. You can still see same things you can edit, but it doesn't ask for a little bio. It asks for ARTH.org. It tells you they're a nonprofit organization. And then even though I have a personal page, I also have a business page so that um, people can find me um, for business. Because a lot of times, um, and the fun thing is, yeah, you, you can post and you post differently to different pages. Uh, some of the things on my business page, I don't post pictures of my grandson. And so I try and keep that separate. On my um, business page, I'm really focusing on things that relate to either community events, activities I'm doing, tips around graphic design or event planning. So it's totally different. And But it's still in the look, you have your cover profile. And then here um, for my uh, photo profile, I actually um, use my logo. And I never change that because that's what follows me around. Okay. And so when it comes to your, fo your photos for your profile, it's not about creating the, a photo. It's about taking a photo and it's about having um, the photo on your desktop. So if you were to take a photo on your camera um, and upload it and save it to your desktop, you can take it, use that as um, the picture. Um, you also too, the same way we go into Zoom, uh, you know, if you were to click your start button and go camera, it would actually bring up your camera on your laptop. And from there, you could actually take a picture of yourself with your laptop camera. You can save that and use that as um, a profile photo as well. So the photos the, um, that you choose is just based on whatever pictures you take or save upload, whether they're, you upload them or you actually take them with the laptop or you take them on your phone and save them to the desktop. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you know uh -huh. what size the Zoom pictures need to be? Um, no, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can find out. Um, the thing about the Zoom picture, the profile pictures in Zoom is Zoom allows you to edit it and to kind of move it around and crop it so that it fits in that square nicely. So that one, you're not um, so much um, stuck on size only, but with Facebook, the size does matter. And so you want it to be that 183, 180 pixels by 180 pixels. Okay. The cover photo is, um, and that was the photo you saw of my grandson in the background or on Bette's, it was her her flower. Um, on Renee, it was a picture of her. She had two pictures of her, um, but that's 851 by 315 um, pixels. And again, I translated it to the 11.34 by 4.2, okay? So when it comes to introducing yourself, um, describe it yourself. You know, um, I'm the chief visionary at my company because it's my dream, it's my vision, and I'm the chief of it. Um, Jobs-wise, I worked formerly. Um, how many of y'all are familiar with the Seattle Tennis Club down in Madison Park? I worked there for 10 years right after college. I was their events director. So we planned all kinds of fabulous events. Um, that was a great job. It was a great learning job because I had a budget. <laughs> I had a budget and staff. <laughs> so oh. you always like those. Um, I studied sports management at WSU. I um, went to Roosevelt High School, go Rough Riders, yay, yay, Phyllis. And originally I'm from New York. And so these are just simple things and simple questions that Facebook asks you as a way to try and get you to customize your intro. And you can always edit it. 
And so, and when I hit edit and describe yourself, that's when I went on and added that piece about just fun, loving grandma, auntie, sister, those kind of things. Cause I'm like, okay, girl, you can't be teaching the classes and not have your form all the way completed and filled out. So that's mm. what I did. Okay, any questions right now? No. 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 Okay. No. How do you pose? How do you I do real quick. Okay. Ask. Ask I away. I noticed that uh, Facebook photo size is not on the thing you gave us. Can you give us that again? Yes. So when it comes to the um, cover photo, it is 851 by 315 um, pixels or 11.34 by 4.2. See, that's one of those things after the manual, I realize I'm speaking a foreign language. Y'all not going to understand. What is a pixel? <laughs> okay. And then the profile photo is 180 by 180 pixels. Which is 2.4 inches. So, when it comes to Facebook, the most common type of post that you see uh, people make is um, basic text. It updates and answers the question, What's on your mind? And text posts are made to be quick and short. If you make them too long, people aren't going to see the whole thing. So now when they click on them, they'll see the rest of the paragraph. But if you're really trying to engage people, just keep it uh, quick and short and simple. A uh, post can actually consist of photos. They can do be text, live videos, or life events. And as you see here, when you if I click on what's on my mind, that'll allow me to just type right into um, the box and then you hit your return and it sends it, it posts it on your page. If I wanted to do a live video, I just click on live video. You know, cause there's some times when, you know, some of you who are beautiful entertainers, you just wanna share your gifts and talents. People, especially during COVID are just coming on, going live, singing a few songs, playing their instruments. And, and, you know, making it possible for us to have a little, spread a little joy. So um, live video is definitely another avenue for connecting. And live videos actually get better um, push from Facebook than anything else. Because they like it when people are live. Also, I think sometimes uh, Facebook, when you... Uh, videotape something that somebody's singing or something to kind of edit it because they don't want you copywriting things because sometimes they won't push things through if it's a song that's song. because I know uh, a couple of times at church I uh, recorded something on Facebook but it didn't go through well um, you have to be careful about copyright issues and things like that now that's the one thing yeah. Um, yeah, if it's if they think that it is a copywritten um, song and that you don't have permission, they will shut it down. So um, yeah, that's what happens. Yep. It was okay. a church song. I guess you know it was a song of someone else, and I guess you know. Yeah, they're getting a little particular about that, especially during COVID where everybody is doing everything live. Normally, if you're in a theater, that theater has like an ASCAP license that covers um, you singing copyrighted information. Um, but the music industry definitely is going to have to catch up. You can go and license uh, a picture that you want to use, but to get a copyright or a license for a song, it is still like pulling teeth. They're, they have an antiquated process. So, okay, the other thing when it comes to photos or, so you have live videos you can post or if you have just a photo. So if you want to update someone, what's happening in the workshop, the picture, you can click on photo and it'll allow you to add, you know, multiple images, one image, et cetera. When it comes to life events, life events is um, Facebook allows you to kind of give a chronology of, of your life. So 
you can click on life events and you can put in the date you were born. You can click on life events and you can put on the day you were married. You can click on life events and put on the day you were divorced. <laughs> you can click on life events and put on when a first grandchild. So those life events. So if someone is looking at your um, about, those life events will show up. And it's just, you know, it just gives you a way to chrono, uh, to not chronologically, but it's, it is chronological, but to also just kind of um, share your story. So when you're creating a post, there's a couple things to remember. Do you see right here, it says select privacy. So when you are uh, creating a post, you can post it, it can be public. That means whoever is on Facebook can see it. If they did a search for something, it may come up. Or you can decide that you just wanna share it with your friends on Facebook. You could do, Friends accept. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's my sister in there. <laughs> That's an accident. I got to fix that. Um, I don't post that much anyhow. So, um, but that's one thing to remember is you want to make sure we're staying safe on Facebook. When you add friends to Facebook, you can actually um, create groupings of your friends. You can create family, you can create uh, uh, high school classmates, um, neighborhood group groups. And so that way you can decide if you wanna share it public, share it to just your friends, friends accept, you know, or if you want specific friends. Okay, let's clear that. Okay. The twins, I mean, the, the friends are just the friends that you have accepted, not just anybody. Correct. Facebook. Correct. Okay. And so, and here, here's a tip that no one teaches you. I learned this from my son. <clears throat> if somebody sends you a friend request and you really don't want to accept them, uh, if you deny them and say no, it it doesn't go back and say, oh, uh, you know, Harlan said no, thank you. But what will happen is when it suggests friends, their name may come up, your name may come up again, and they'll go, well, dang, I already asked you to be my friend. So if you have some haters that you don't want to be bothered with, when they ask to be your friends, do not respond. You, you yeah. leave them in Facebook limbo. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And so they can't ask you to be their friend again. And then they're not on, they can't see your post. So, um, you know, for whatever that's worth, that's what I do. You know, some <laughs> people I know, you know, cause I start to think about um, when, when I, um, when I first started with Facebook, I had, Twanda Hill as my, my um, personal page. And then I realized I don't have 976 friends. And so I actually converted that to my business page. And I could have for my personal page, if I use maybe my middle name, um, I could have done a personal page, but then people don't know me by my middle name. So what I did is I created a set, a, a new personal page and I really only accept friends that I know and people that I know. If they are associates, I push them towards my business page because that's what they want. <laughs> my personal page is one, I want to keep it personal. And how many, how many, um, Facebook pages can you have though? Cause you, it, it sounded like you said you opened up another um, right. Facebook profile. Yes. So what I did is um, I took my original personal page and I converted it into a business page. And then I started a new personal page. And so, um, and they have, oh. one is Twanda Hill, one is Twanda Hill and Associates. So okay. it's not that big a difference, but the difference is in the actual page functionality. A business page does, you can tell 
your insights yeah. on it, where the personal page is, is for more personalized things. And so, um, but you can have multiple pages. I think the personal pages max out with like 5,000 friends. And so I know some people who have multiple pages, um, why they think those 5,000 people, you know, are really their friends. <laughs> but, you know, I remember like Ron Sims, you know, he, he's got multiple personal pages because being he was the executive director for so long, we all think that we're really his friend, you know, so um, we asked to be his friend, but, you know, right. it, 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 you know, it's not like I sat down and broke bread with him. So he's not really my friend. <laughs> right. Wanda. Yes. If um, somebody uh, wants to be your friend, but, and you know them and you really don't want them to be your friend, but you don't want to let them know, you just leave it as it is. Is that what you said? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Now, what will happen if you if you push decline? What will happen? So, what will happen is that eventually, every now and then, Facebook will say, "Hey, let's suggest some friends for you," because based on you know the different artificial intelligence and your friends that you have and friends of friends, and so your name may come back up. And so after the second or third time, if you keep denying them, I'm gonna know, wait a second, I know I asked Ruby to be my friend and she must be declining me. So if you just leave them in Facebook limbo, they can't ask you anymore. Okay. Uh, okay. It, shoot, that in that itself is worth a million bucks, huh? <laughs> uh, Twanda, I have a question. Yes. Uh-huh. So how do you, delete a page um you have to go into your settings uh -huh. on facebook and i'll get to the settings page because it's that little gear that gear okay. that i show you um is okay. always going to mean settings and so okay. you go to the settings to delete a page okay. now when you're creating a post you can actually change your background you'll see this little icon here which has um right here is a rainbow. If you click on the rainbow, it will offer you a variety of backgrounds that you can pick. So when you see those cute little um, Facebook uh, backgrounds, that's how they get them. It's just an easy click on here, select the background. This one here with the four buttons, if you click on that, that's gonna give you more, more options. And, um, if you can see this little uh, sister here, um, let's see, will it uh -oh, get the annotate off? Clear all drawings. Uh, I was trying to, okay. If down here is actually, um, one of my options is I actually have some um, avatars that look sort of like me. So, and you can get those too. So, you know, Facebook starts sharing with you fun, different ways that you can um, enhance the look of your post. You can add to your post um, what's on your mind. So remember, um, we talked about interacting before. So you can add an image to your post like if you wrote some text, you can hit that little person with the plus sign if you wanna tag friends. So if I send a post that has something to do with Couture and I thought, oh, I wanna make sure Bette sees this, I can tag her in, in that post. I can also, if I have a photo and it's a picture of Muriel and I, if I tag Muriel in the, in the photo, um, it will come up in your feed versus if I just put it out there without the tags, you may see it, you may not. You get to add feelings. How are you feeling today? Blessed, happy, sad. You know, you click on that emoji and it gives um, you an opportunity to add your feelings to your post because we know feelings are important. <laughs> the other thing is, is, you know, when back, uh, and soon when we get to go back into venues and into businesses, if you want to check in and say you're at the theater, 
um, you're at Langston Hughes, you wanna check in because it helps them to let other folks in the community know you're there. Um, that's when you hit this location bar. And that's how you check in when people check in at the theater. Then you have a GIF. Do you guys know what a GIF is? Nope. So no. a GIF yeah. is an actual, it's like a moving picture. Right. And so, oh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's what the GIF is. And so if you click on the uh, the GIF, the GIF, the GIF, it will um, bring up some um, some opportunities for you to add a moving picture into your post. Mm. The three dots is a more button. And when you click on more, it allows you to um, create a watch party and also to raise money. And the watch parties come in handy, you know, um, I, I've seen some Zumba classes happening online, somebody cutting up, Tyrone was cutting up and doing a Zumba part, a Zumba class, and some other people, instead of just sharing his post, they created a watch party and that allowed other people to come to their page and see his event, so there's just so many different ways to engage and interact with each other using uh, Facebook. What did you say the check-in uh, is on is, that? Say you went to uh, Langston Hughes and you wanted to let people know you were at the theater, you know, or you were at one a restaurant and you wanted to check in at the restaurant, let people know you're there. We end up doing what we call these check-ins that's a social um, way of helping other businesses. It shows that people, the cool people are there visiting their place. So um, it, we have a theater here. Um, we have a black theater here in Phoenix. And every time I go, the gentleman, he starts out, most of the time you think people um, are gonna say, uh, take out your cell phones and turn them off. He says, take out your cell phones, open up your social media and check in and let people know you're here. Because then if somebody sees you're there, they may go, oh, well, Ruby, why are you at the, why is she there? Oh, there's a fabulous play going on. I can see that. So that's our social engagement and our way that we can help support um, businesses and services that are important to us. When it comes to finding friends, that's what Facebook is all about. Adding friends is a real big step uh, in helping you staying connected with one another. So at the top of your um, Facebook page, there's a menu that allows you to set up posts. You can look to see what your, uh, your about page, you can set up friends and so here it says, I have 1,392 friends. Lord have mercy. All my <laughs> friends. <laughs> you know what happened is because my business name and my name are the same, I think I finally just gave up on trying to keep them separate. And I just don't really post a bunch of personal stuff. But, you know, but if I am going to post personal stuff, it is on my personal page. So, you know, if I have friends who are Republicans and if they don't want to hear me on my personal page, then get off it. <laughs> now, I won't post that kind of stuff on my business page. You know, I'll be more respectful. But if you do right here, you see the search bar. This allows you to search for friends. And um, if there's somebody you're looking for, you can put their name in. That's how I found Renee because Renee and I weren't friends. I just met Renee Bush yesterday. And so, Renee, did you accept my friendship? <laughs> uh oh, nope. <laughs> nope. See, uh huh, because uh -huh, you didn't know how to do it. No, I haven't went in yet. No, I okay. I'm not on Facebook right now. I'm just listening to the class. You better accept but my I will friendship. Accept you, okay? And if you okay, don't, don't keep girl. me in Facebook limbo. <laughs> Renee, do you have a laptop? Yeah, Renee, she's just I do got have my laptop, but I'm at work. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, she just hasn't had time. I just did it last night. So anyhow, so that's how you find friends. You put in the names, do a request and see, you but look at all the names in. Um, you can, or you can even put their phone number in. 
um, their email, their phone number, I their friend. I can put your phone number in and your pop up because I have a lot of people. I really don't do Facebook, but I have a lot of friends. Yeah, so you can put in. Um, you can try my my phone number. I don't know which number I have um, connected to my account. Um, I don't think it's um, and the but easiest way. Well, my name being Twanda, there's not a whole lot of us. There are a few of us, but not a whole lot. And so when when you put in my name, my my picture pops up. I so, have a question. If you go into Messenger and you write a message, and then it says add me as a friend, you can add people like that too. Yes, you can. And so we're going to get to Messenger shortly. So anyhow, so this can oh, show okay. you. So right now, the interesting thing about this is you see Celeste Evans is my sister. It shows that she and I have 69 mutual friends. Well, of course, that makes sense because that's my sister. So we have family members and things. And then my son is Brian and we have 127 mutual friends. Well, that even makes more sense because... Um, not only do we have family members, we got two sides of the family. So, um, so you know, but this is where you go to find the friends. And then, you, but just be selective about who you pick and who you're looking for and making sure it's the right person. Other ways that you can engage on Facebook, and this is very similar to Zoom where they have these interactions. So we all know about click and like, like, you know, well, you don't even have to like it now. You could really love it. You can ha ha it. You can be wow. You can be sad or you can be angry. So um, these are some other interactions that are available for you. Safety and privacy. I, th I want to really uh, go over this because um, I this is really important because um, there's so much opportunity to scam people on the internet. So I really want you to be mindful of that. Um, keep your friends list to real friends and that way you feel comfortable sharing information with them. Understand that when you share or post, you can share with friends or the public. And if you feel confident with your friends list, it makes sharing easier. So, um, but just understand if you're posting it public, if you're posting it to friends. Um, and even when it comes to adding friends, um, you can set up, when you're setting up your um, Facebook page, you can set it up so that only friends of a friend can ask to be your friend. I mean, you can make it as tight as you need to. And, you know, a lot of times we do that with our children so that we can monitor who's on their page. Um, don't share your identity. Um, you should never, um, other than when you set up, don't give someone your birth date. Um, and if you choose to, don't give away the year of your of your um, your birth year. Tawanda? Yes. How would I remove my birth date? I didn't know at the time. That sure. I so um, at the end, I'll show you how to go in. If you go in to edit your profile, Mm -hmm. um, that we covered at the beginning. Um, that's how you you'll go in, and we can find your birth date and remove and remove it. Okay. Thank okay. You. Mm -hmm. um, I generally don't share location information. You know, um, I don't want people to know that readily where I am, and so um, so I don't share my location. Um, if I'm going to check in at a place, I'll go in and turn my location on or check in for that location. But I don't generally keep my location on um, my Facebook page. And I know Facebook at one point would say, no, you know, we can tell you which friends of yours are in the same neighborhood. OK, I don't need to know that closely if you you're in the same neighborhood. <laughs> um, the settings and privacy menu on Facebook um, you can do a privacy checkup and it can actually let you know how private you are looking. And I would use that function regularly to identify who sees your information. And so to get to that privacy and checkup, so if you were at your profile on your homepage, mm -hmm. at the very top, you have Twanda 
Um, there is a gear here that's for settings and privacy. If you click on that, you see right here, it says privacy checkup. Activity log, news feed. So I, I'm not going over everything because it can overwhelm you with how much you can do. I'm trying to cover some of the basics. And then as we get into the new year, if we need to go to the next step or if you have more questions, we can start asking more questions along the way. But there is just so much about um, Facebook that I don't want to do, um, I don't want to overwhelm you. Okay, so someone asked, what's the difference between profile birthday and Facebook sharing birthday? So when you ask, when you're setting up your Facebook account, it asks for your birthday date so that it can verify your application, but it's not holding it in any place for you. Um, so that's what it, it's just used as a verification. Remember when you were setting up your Zoom account as well, it asked for your birth date. But then once that's done, it doesn't store that information. And then the Facebook sharing um, of your birth date, like if it's your birthday and, and I go, oh, um, you know, 57 years ago, I was born on this day. You know, that's probably... A bit, you know, if somebody was really trying to scam you and get your information, you've just told them that you were born in 1963. And if it lists your birthday as October 20th, I've given them my birth date and year. So, um, you know, it's okay to celebrate birthdays, but just think about how um, you are actually advertising the information that someone could use to harm you. How do you delete? How do you delete the birthday year? In your edit profile. So at the very beginning, when we when you go to the first log in and it has your profile and you want to edit your profile, you can go in and you can uh, remove your birth date. Okay, at the bottom it has base information, edit, and then it got female and then my birth date. Yes. So. so Take the year off of your birthday. Okay. Okay. All right. I love it that you're able to hear the information and do it live. Okay, wonderful. Here's another, a menu bar for Facebook when you first come in. Um, home pages, watch videos, marketplace group. Facebook is more than just about connecting um, with one-on-one -on -one friends. Um, if someone has a business page, if you have pages that you like, say you like the Oprah Winfrey uh, page or you like CNN or you like uh, ESPN, you can like those pages. And if you wanted to bring, quickly get to the pages that you like, you just click on pages and it'll bring up all the pages that you like. Um, and then you can scroll through them. If you want to watch videos, you're able to just click over here, go to watch videos. Facebook also has a marketplace. Again, I tell you, be, be concerned, you know, be careful. It's like any, you know, swap meet, you know, you, if you don't know them, you got to really think about whether you really want to go there to purchase something. Okay. And then the other pieces that you'll see um, the plus sign lets you create messenger notifications. And if to get to information about your account, if you click on this down arrow, it'll bring up your account information. It'll allow you to make adjustments, change phone numbers. If you have a different email you want to use, all those type of things. Notifications, it tells me that I have two messages that I haven't or two posts that I haven't paid attention to. Okay. Uh, Tawanda. You, yes. Uh, I, I noticed sometimes I've been Facebook friends with somebody and then all of a sudden I'll get a Facebook friend request. Well, it happened to me. <clears throat> a friend told me that my picture had changed. It was a dove on and he thought something was wrong. Well, I hadn't changed my password since I first got Facebook. So that was for years. Yes. And I get and so I had to go in and change my password because somebody was trying to make a page under my name. 
Absolutely. People do that. That's happened to me. So anytime your account is compromised, where somebody's tried to mimic your page and post as you, the first thing you want to do is go in and change your password. And that's that will get them out of your account. Um, it's so funny. A couple of years ago, somebody uh, tried to impersonate me and the poor person um a couple people, all of a sudden, my phone stopped buzzing. Zip, 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 text is coming in. Somebody's trying. You, did you get a new Facebook page? No. Somebody's trying to impersonate you. So luckily, I was able to go in on my phone and change my password. And then I put a, a post on my page that said, if somebody asked to be um, my friend, your friend, I'm not, you're already my friend. So it's not me. Well, then my friends, and they're very, um, uh own way decided we know that that's not your friend she's too ugly then they start tearing her down they i thought okay wow. well i it'll teach wow. you to try and take my page wow. <laughs> they just really let her have it so um but yeah unfortunately that happened and I, i'm always wondering like how how are they going to steal information like at some point in time wow. You, like, what is it that you think my friends are going to do? Like, all of a sudden, I'm going to be friends with Anthony, and then I'm going to say, hey, Anthony, can you send me some money? And Anthony's going to go, okay, sure. <laughs> I, I just, I, I always wonder, like, the energy that these criminals spend trying to hack stuff, like, if they could do some good with it instead, you know, it would just serve us so much better, because like, what do you think you're going to get? I mean, you call my friends are trying to ransom me off. They'll tell you to keep me. So <laughs> it's not the person you want to ransack it. And um, anyhow, anyhow, there's one other feature to Facebook that I really want you guys to know. It's called Facebook Messenger. And you saw it here. Um, it's right after the plus sign. That little uh, squiggly line is called Facebook Messenger. And Messenger is an instant Luana? messaging service. Yes. Luana? Yes. This, this is Jerome. Um, one thing I wanted to point out before you leave was that on the group, yes, uh, oh. that, uh, we've used that for our family uh, reunion, like absolutely, create a group, and and that is not only is it good for keeping the family together, be all over the country, but the other thing is that people who did not uh, have Facebook or didn't feel like they had it, really got on it because they want to be a part of the family. And Absolutely. Kids, the kids and, you know, when someone have a baby and all of that. So that's really great. And I wanted to share that with the group. Thank you, Jerome, because I did bypass that. And that's so good to remember. And the other thing is that when you're part of a group and you're sharing, only the group can see it. Nobody else can see it. You don't have to worry about if it's a public post or non-public if it's the group definitely that's the only person the only people that can see it and a lot of times the groups work well yeah we have we have a family group as well um and then we did another one for family reunion um we've done it for high school reunion so the group feature is a great way to um to connect with those special people in your life. So thanks, Jerome, for um, catching that. Okay, so Messenger. Messenger is owned, it's an instant message service owned by Facebook. And so what it allows you to do is same thing, similar to Zoom, share screen, call participants, video, here's your mic, or you can hang up. So when you click on Messenger, if you want to call participants, you just click on that and you find their Facebook name and you can do multiple people. And so if I set up a weekly, if I set up a call between um, Patricia, uh, Wendy, um, and Phyllis and I, I can set that up and they'll get a message. Their, their, their laptop will start ringing or they'll get a message inviting them to join. And then once they join the group, um, then we can automatically each week, certain times, I don't have to recall you. I could just go back and join the group. So, um, it's really a great way to connect 
again with family. Uh, Messenger is, you know, people can send you private messages one-on-one. Um, this one, somebody sent me an attachment. Um, Kelly, Patricia, and five others. This is my weekly Sunday group with Dr. Mims. When I click, if I click on that, any, any Sunday at one o'clock, I know we're meeting. I don't have to wait for anyone to initiate it. I can go in and click on that group. So that messenger and video chat is a great feature for you to really work towards because that's an easy way um, to stay connected with family. Um, I have another group. Um, I, found a, I found a first cousin in Ancestry.com and we've been doing Facebook meetings as well. And even when we met, we were on the phone and we're like, oh, we'll go to Facebook because you can see pictures of each other and the kids. And so it really can work as a, a fun tool to connect you to one another. So um, any questions? Oop, oop. No? no so you guys are ready to uh, go to Facebook and um, and begin setting up your pages and helping one another and connecting with each other. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Okay. Who has a question? Give it to me, Carolyn. When um, you didn't go over, or maybe you did, uh, chat in Messenger. So you normally have all of your friends listed and if uh -huh. someone send you um say like a, a video mm -hmm. and you wanted to send it to just two people and i found out that when i do that it automatically send it to everyone that i don't want it to be sent to because there's certain videos that you want to send to people you know and ones you don't so how I, I never knew how that came about. Okay, so you can see my screen again? Yes. So I am in my Facebook page and you're saying in the video chat, in Messenger, right. Messenger. someone has said, like, I got an attachment here and I wanna forward it or reply to it. Mm-hmm. So um, the thing is, is I, if it's sent to you as a group, then you're all part of that group. If you're wanting to just send it to one individual person, I would probably download it. Uh, or here, actually, you see, when I clicked on um, this uh, bag, it actually allowed me to forward it. And there you go. That's what it does. So you can forward it to that individual person. Oh, so if I wanted okay. to forward that to you, uh, see, um, because you're not my friend, it didn't come up yet. What's your last name, Harlan? Tibbs, T-I-B-B-S. Look at that even. Is wow. that you? Yeah, that's me and my um, nieces. Okay, see, I just forwarded you some something my honor sent me. Hopefully it oh, wasn't I, I just, I just <laughs> request you as my friend. Okay, you just requested me. Okay, you want me to not leave you in Facebook um, <laughs> limbo. Okay. Um, the, the other thing that I wanna do really quickly is um, if you get a chance, please go to the ARTH page and like them. When it comes to, bit, oops, sorry. That's not what I wanted. I want their Facebook page. When it comes to business pages, you don't ask them to be your friend. You just actually like their page. So it's African-Americans Reach and Teach Health Ministries. Mm -hmm. And then um, while we're here, I'm gonna actually um, set up a page. I'm gonna create a page and the name of the page is going to be Come on, um, desktop preview. Oh, here, right over here, um, ELAW. Elders living and aging well. And then if it asks me for a category, um, 
uh, nonprofit. I, I'm going to put this as a community organization. And then the description of this group, this group is, this page is going to be for African American elders living in King County. And so I can go create and it creates that page. Oh. So now that that's a page, now it's asking me for a profile photo. And so I, I'm gonna develop um, a logo for elders living and aging well. Um, you guys wanna see how I work real quick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the thing about technology is there's, a, there's an app for everything. And so um, stop share. I'm gonna share a different screen with you. Okay, so I, I'm, I went to an a app called um, Canva, and Canva is a free program that allows you to create uh, folders and flyers. Um, it allows you to create your backgrounds and things like that. You can see I, I've done a lot. Look, that's my Christmas card for the year. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I'm going to create a design. What's the name of the site? Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Oh. And this is totally extra. This is nothing that, um, but, you know, it, it, it's just a little something, something. So I'm going to do it real quick. So elders living and, and aging well. I'm like, okay, we want them to have um, some kind of logo or something fun to it. So I'm just going to design a logo real quick and I'm gonna call it ELAW, L-A-W. And then down here, I'm gonna type out what the name is, Elders Living and Aging Well. Okay, and instead of this crest here, I'm actually going to pull in um, uh, an image of Arth's logo because I can. Okay. Oh, the one with the elders on it. The so, yes, yeah, so this is going to help so that, um, uh oh, see folders. I saw Arth. Here we go. Uh, images. See, this is right on the spot, too. Um, I'm hoping that I. Uh, and then, and then I don't like that black background on it. I think that's too stark. Um, what if I were to do um, the background on just part of it? And make that red. Looks good. Okay, there you go. And so I'm going to create, a, that's just my quick, dirty, quick logo. And I'm saving it. And one of the things is you can see these are all client files. I always have to um, have folders. A folder is like, um, remember in a filing cabinet, you have a folder and then you have file folders. So I would have uh, a drawer with clients by alphabetical order. This is my way of doing that on the computer. So I'm going to ELAW and I'm calling this um, ELAW logo. Okay, and now I'm okay. gonna go back to Facebook. And so now that I'm back, I'm gonna add my profile photo which I want it to be just the little logo. Okay, so now you can see how it looks too small. So I'm going to go back and play with it later so that I can add in, uh, make that ELAW look a little larger. But this was just my quick, dirty way of um, setting up a page, um, if I want to add a cover photo. Um, 
Wanda? Yes. That logo. Okay, so see how you have that logo down in the corner? The, the, so this, the picture there, the big one, is that something else? Is that another? Yeah, that's called your cover photo. The cover and that, photo. Okay. Yeah, that photo can change uh, sizes. It can, um, I mean, not sizes, but that one on a business page, that one can change with the different activity. Um, let's see, can oh. I find... Um, Oh, there's my salsa recipe I was looking for. <laughs> oh, I <need> that. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to find a, a fun picture of um from that represents elders. So let me go back to uh, Oh, you have it. It's um Yeah, I have a couple of them. You know, th th there's one. And you can see, you see how blurry that one is? because it's not a great photo. So, um, but also too, you could actually reposition it if I needed to. Um, but I am actually gonna put that one in the, um, in the garbage. You see over here on the left-hand side, since I don't like it, I'm gonna click garbage and I'm gonna add something different. And so this just gives us an opportunity to, um, you can play with it until you get it to look like you want it to look. So I'm gonna grab the next one and just put it in and call it good African-American family. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, that yeah, one is better, right. but it's right. still, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna go save. So as you guys are getting onto Facebook, come to this page and uh, click like. Okay, and then it will we'll start adding up because this page is where we're going to start adding events that are happening. We're going to be able to share community opportunities with one another. And so it's it's a um, it's going to it's going to build it, We're going to just keep building on us getting together and us uh, gathering and sharing information and just staying connected so that you know, we're, we're not isolated out here. We want folks, ooh, ooh, Miss Muriel stepped out. We want folks to oh, stay connected, feel connected and share. If your church or your organization is doing something that others might enjoy, let's put it out there. And so I'm gonna make sure that, that any, anyone can post to the page and check in regularly so we can see what's going on, how we're doing, questions you might have. Um, I just want to really keep us together and keep us communicating. So between that Facebook page and the web page, that's where we're going to continue to share information. Okay, any other questions? Wanda, this is Rosalind. I wanted to, um, when you group your friends and yes. family, I, how do you change that? Okay, so um, let's go back into Facebook and share. It's so funny. Uh, some of the things too, I, I, I got to talk myself into seeing it. So if I go to friends and um, so if I have um, my sister is listed as my friend and if I want to change her, see friendship. Okay, so I just clicked on those three dots. Uh, nope, that didn't work. Okay, look at that. Oh, can you tell I'm the youngest? <laughs> um, I have to look at, at that. Um, you want to know edit profile. I don't want to edit the profile. I want to edit the friend information. So yeah, I want to regroup. I want to regroup them. Okay, so here you go. I clicked on friends mm -hmm. and I can make them a favorite. I can edit friend list, unfollow or unfriend. So if you click on the friends um, icon, icon and then go edit friend list and then you can add her uh -oh. as a close friend, oh, okay. um, restricted, unnamed. So there you go. Okay, I okay. got it. Uh-huh. One well, other question too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um 
before we leave, can you show us how to download our background for um, Zoom? Remember, um, you said you were going to show us. Yeah. So um, what's happened is that there, there is. Um, it should just automatically download and with it not automatically downloading, I can't second guess how to do, how to get those uh, uh, pictures downloaded. So what I would suggest you do, like yesterday, we went to our Google browser and we went to free Zoom virtual backgrounds. And cause we want free ones, we don't want to pay for them. And then once you, like unsplash.com is a great site um, for virtual backgrounds. You okay. can see my mother-in-law's got the Taj Mahal behind her. Um, so when you click on, and I'm clicking on it right now and it's churning. And so these are some free backgrounds that we have the opportunity to download. And so um, the key about when you're downloading something is that you want to know where you're saving it to. So if I, I click download, did you see that here? In yeah. this, I clicked on that download arrow. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to save it, I'm actually going to stick it in my downloads account. And um, I know it's the Unsplash um, virtual background. So I'm going to save it. And so, and if you save, you know, you can save a couple of different backgrounds. Which one you like? It's like this water. That yeah. one's pretty too. Okay. Save. Okay. Now, and then remember yesterday. So if you were, once I, I've saved it, it is in my download um, folder. I can go to my arrow that's to the right of stop video, choose virtual background, and I'm gonna click the add button. Add image. And in downloads, I, he, here are the backgrounds I just downloaded. And you've seen how it changed behind me. Mm -hmm. Oh. If I, if I wanted, yes, yesterday we won the prices, right? Then we went to the beach. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to add an image again. I'm going to add the image because remember I saved two of them. And, oh, that's the same one. Okay. That's why it helps to, eh, which one is it? Martin? If I do the. Wrong one, one more. Okay, there, so, you. there you go. Ooh, see, yeah. I'm gonna dive off. Okay, so that's the the simplest way for you to add uh, to gather up some backgrounds, uh, virtual backgrounds for yourself. Um, those of you who are a little more advanced, if you go into Canva, you will see you can do virtual backgrounds there too. That's where um, you know so that you can actually design some and play with some. So look at all these different opportunities. Here's a nice holiday one. And then I picked it and I can hit download. Okay. Dewana? Yes. Yeah, this is Jerome. I missed that first step. I was trying to do that this morning. Okay. I, I missed the first step. Which one on how to get the picture? Yeah, how to get the pictures and the further going to to your um, browser and yep. doing what? Put in a uh, free Zoom, a uh, free Zoom virtual backgrounds. Okay, I can put that into the Google or yep. Chrome. Okay. Uh, Google is Chrome. Right. Okay. And, and then, then what, what do I do after that? Okay, so. Um, what, what I did is I went down and I, I know that Canva has them, Unsplash, and I went to Unsplash. You see Unsplash.com? Did that come up for you? Yeah. But so I'm, seeing, no, I'm not click. doing it. I'm, I'm just following what you're doing. Okay. okay so you, I clicked on that and it brought up all these pretty pictures. 
And the cool thing about Unsplash is Unsplash is a way where up and coming photographers send in their photos so that folks like you and I could use them without yeah. having to pay for a license. If I were using this for a brochure that I was designing for a business, I would make sure to give credit to the photographer, but to mm -hmm. use it just for a virtual background. Uh-oh. It didn't. Um, I wouldn't worry about um, having the um, the photographer's name. So once I find a photo I like, if you see in Splash, they have the heart, the plus key, and the this down arrow. This down arrow is what allows you to download the file. Got it. Got okay? it. Okay. Mary, Got it. did you catch that? So that down no. arrow... I don't uh, see it. I don't see it. I was working on something else. <laughs> well, how are you going to ask me a question and not pay attention? Oh, I didn't I ask have a question. You a question. Uh, I have Mary a question. Berg? I have a question. Yes. Where, where is the download arrow? So you see here on my picture, you have a heart sign, a plus sign, and the, the arrow. Yes. Okay. The arrow, it's, when you hover over it, it says download photo. Okay. Okay, right. and when yeah. you download it, the big thing to remember is to know where it's downloading to. And so um, I, I would suggest you download it to the download folder. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, can I ask so a you, question so before you can only, So you can only download it if it has that arrow on it? No, if it doesn't have the arrow on it, who asked that question? Wendy. Wendy, okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is if you if you go to a photo that you like, um, mm -hmm. if you right click with your mouse, you can go save image as. Oh, okay. Um, the other thing, you know, um, okay. And then there was, if if you just have the touchpad, you see if I, I clicked on it with my touchpad, it opened the photo up, and then it gave me the options to download on the right oh, okay. upper right hand corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Somebody I, else had a question. Yeah, I do. Uh, yes. about I have I like to take, I got pictures. I take a lot of pictures and I got pictures of Mount Rainier and stuff. It's on my phone. Is this is this computer safe enough to download stuff from my phone yes. into this computer? Yes. Okay. Yes, cuz Windows 10 has a um it has security with it. Is is automatically a part of the Windows 10 package. I didn't I know tons, that. I have tons of, my, of pictures of myself that I want to go on. Yeah. So the thing that I would consider though is that um, are you really wanting to put them on the laptop and take up your hard drive space, or do you no, want to? I just want to take. I was going to take a few of them and put on there. Not. Oh, absolutely. No. Okay. Because the other thing that you might consider is um, uploading them into your a uh, secured cloud account. I do. So, I have. They are in my cloud account. Perfect. Yeah. So you can download a few, and they'll be perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. Can so you do uh, anything like this with Facebook? Say that again. What about Facebook? Can you do anything like this with Facebook, like you're doing the Zoom pictures? Can yeah. You, uh... So if there's a picture on Facebook that you like, mm -hmm. um, if you right click on the picture, mm -hmm. you can save image as. No, I mean, like I see people that will have things, uh, a different background on a picture or they'll have uh, like I voted and things like that. I don't know how they get them. So so the pictures, they're able to grab the pictures, however they're getting them, whether they're finding uh -huh. them online and mm -hmm. saving it into the onto their hard drive. And then when they go on to Facebook, um, mm -hmm. so a lot of times for their cover page, they are um, changing. Like here, if you edit your cover page and mm -hmm. say, I want to select the photo mm -hmm. and I can, um, I don't want to select a photo. I want to add yeah. a photo, upload photo, not select. I want to upload it. And so I can go back to the download to that background that I just mm -hmm. um, saved. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of working its way through. There we okay. go. Oh, okay. And you see how it allows me to reposition it so I can 
decide mm -hmm. which part I want to show. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So, Twanda, yeah, I have a question. question. Yes. How long should my battery be yeah. lasting? Yeah. Um, it is typical. We looked that up the other day and it uh -huh. said that, um, three to four hours, um, mm -hmm. a lot of it depends on how many programs you have open and, you know, how heavily you're working the laptop. So okay. how, how long is yours lasting? Not even as long as our meeting. Right. Me too. Like during the meeting, I actually have to plug it in. Yeah. Me too. Hmm. It's okay. not holding the charge. It's Stay not right holding. Here. Oh, right. Okay. Cut out. Right. So you have about four of you whose computers are not holding the charge. Yeah, it should hold for at least four. Give me the. I heard Bette. I mean, yeah, Phyllis is included in that as well. Muriel. Muriel. I just leave mine plugged in when I know that we're going to have a meeting. And Dorothy. Dorothy. Dorothy Roth. And who was the other person who just said I leave mine plugged in? Phyllis Davis. Okay. I leave mine plugged in. Okay, and then who was the last person? Patricia, Patricia Morris. Okay. Yeah. And Patricia Valentine. I keep yeah. mine plugged in as well. Okay. Mine's, is, mine's is gone too almost. Yeah, and I'm questioning mine too, um, Tawana. I think I mentioned that yesterday. I'm kind of questioning mine. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to check on that piece. And um, um, I have... Um, Elizabeth Morris, Muriel Clark, Dorothy Roth, Phyllis Davis, Patricia Sheppa, and Patricia Valentine. Yes. And Patricia Morris. Oh, uh, Patricia Morris, not Sheppa. Shepherd, excuse and me. And Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. And okay. Mary Berg. And Mary Berg. Are, okay. you, are you putting down everybody that's attended the class? Or no, what I'm, 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 I, I'm trying to um, note who's having trouble with their batteries not lasting um, the whole oh. workshop. And um, yeah, because I, I believe it should. Um, what I'm going to do um, tomorrow for tomorrow's class, I'm going to actually teach the workshop using the same laptops you guys have and see, I'll start out with a brand bat, new battery and see what it does. And um, I will get back to you guys on that piece. Um, Harlan needs a manual. And then someone asked about Zoom pictures. Any other questions? You're going to contact me about my computer, are you? Who's you? Who's Patricia, Patricia Valentine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have that whole group of you who are having battery issues. No, okay. Mine. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what else are you having? Your camera issues? Uh, yeah, the video. Yeah, it just doesn't. Um, yeah, it just takes a picture, and that's all. Yeah. So, Patricia, I definitely we want to change yours out. Okay, this is Katie. Yes. And honey. okay, mine. I don't. It don't show my. How do I get my camera to show my picture? And I see there's several other people on that well, just have their name and no picture. Okay, so um, do you see at the bottom of your screen where it says um, stop video or start video? <clears throat> at the bottom menu, stop video? To your left. To yes, to left. your left, bottom left. You might have to touch it. Yeah, you have to, yeah. You click on that. Yeah, so click on that and tell me what's happening. What happens, Katie? Let's okay, see. now it's an arrow through it says uh, it's not, not on. on. Okay, okay, so no, 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 hold on. So now to the right of that same icon, click on the, that down arrow button and select a camera. Okay, this is, mine is not working. Mine says, uh, Oh, integrate camera. Yes, select that. Um, okay, and now. Okay, I click. That's clicked. Integrate camera. Okay, so that's clicked. But okay. I still and now I go back to start start video. Yes, go back to start video. There you go. Oh, you were there for a second. There are then, other people that 
I don't, you know, there you, not there you go. We see there you. There you are. Yeah. Now you see me. Right yeah. on, Katie. <laughs> you guys are so freaking good. You know, <laughs> y'all, I can tell you what to do, and you are hitting those buttons and turning it on and making it happen. Okay, so You're Katie, where'd you patient, go now? So that makes it that makes it easy. Good, good. Because you're patient and thank you, Harlan. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I heard somebody. Uh, yes. <laughs> Did you say Arth will be having some classes after the new year? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one one of the things is I have everybody's emails. I have your phone numbers. Um, and I have um, you might have the web page. Uh, Harlan Tibbs, um, I do, I think, oh. um, hold on, I can double check. Um, but what happened is that between the emails we'll send you and the website, that digital equity uh, project page, program page, and the eLaw Facebook group, so that page. So we're going to continue to stay connected. Um, you know who wants to plan a party? We could have we could have a Zoom party. Yeah. <laughs> you know, bring a beverage and That's come perfect. on down. It's just something for, something else for us to do rather than just sit around and in do this nothing. Pandemic and just sit. It gives us something to do. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, yeah. I have a great concert we did this summer that mm -hmm. um, called "All the Let the String Speak." That I'm happy to set up a time. And you guys can come to Zoom and watch it um, to see this fabulous music being played. It's, it's just, there's a lot happening in, in town and Absolutely. there's a lot of things that are happening. And so I don't mind scheduling some Zoom parties and, you know, if you can come, you can come. If you can't make it, you can't and um, you'll get the next time. And then I don't have to be the only one to schedule events or parties and stuff you know <laughs> a lot of y'all hadn't seen each other in a while so don't be afraid to reach out to one another um um does any yeah i, I i'm gonna send out a look with the next email i'll also send out a post to see if you guys mind um sharing phone numbers or emails with each other um I don't want to, I know people will say yes, but some people may not want to and may not feel comfortable saying no. So mm -hmm. I'll get you to check off that you don't mind. And we'll, you know, we really want our folks to stay connected because you guys are active elders. Y'all not- I have an announcement. Who's that? <laughs> she finished. Okay, hold on a second. So, um, because you guys are an active group. So you get, there's a lot of stuff that you're doing that we want to share with one another because you guys maybe make some new friends, reconnect with some old friends. So <laughs> who had an announcement? Mary? I do. Um, Dorothy. I recently, Ruby. this is Ruby. I recently announced that um, this uh, project that I'm going to be doing called Zoom Check-Ins this uh, actual class came in right in handy because I didn't know this class, I, I didn't know I was gonna have it and they just called me right at, this, at the right time. But um, what we're gonna do is, if you know anybody, any seniors that's alone, that needs somebody to, add, to check in with them maybe twice a month, you know, once a month, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just uh, keep the group, you know, limit to about eight in the group then I, I'd like for everybody that participates in that group after a few sessions, if they could set up their own group and you know start getting checking and having seniors check in. And basically what we're gonna do for maybe 40 minutes starting out that free session, right? Um, we'll just go around, check out, talk with everybody in the group, make sure they're okay, make sure they don't have any press, pressing issues. And we'll also, um, we'll also go through the AARP uh, safety guidelines for internet. We're gonna do that every single day, every single time because it's so important. I'm working with the uh, uh, Southeast Senior Center and also the Central Senior Center. If anybody needs a flyer, my um, email address is keepyourhabitat 
at gmail.com. And um, if, if you know anybody that needs that service, we would like their grown child to make sure that that's something that they feel comfortable with. And so we're starting, my first meeting is January 13th and January 27th. So uh, that's something that we're gonna do. And I tell you, Tawana, this class came right in handy. Well, that mm -hmm. is great to know. So Ruby, can you also send me, email me a copy of that flyer? I will. And I will post it on the digital equity program Perfect. Um, page. So um, the other thing to know is ARF is more than just, you know, these workshops. They have uh, two programs that I wanted someone to share with. Um, it's on the community navigators and uh, community lay, lead, lay leaders. And it's, it's similar to what you're doing, um, Ruby, where it's giving people opportunity. Um, I think the navigators, um, they work with, they actually are doing phone calls because even though we were able to get laptops for you guys, there's still quite a few folks who just aren't ready to have a laptop or they don't want to. So they're actually calling into people and then they have another program um, with uh, the lay leaders and that's for the church folks who um, want to know more. So I will resend that information out to everyone from ARTH because um, they also have a little stipend that goes with both of their programs. So Ruby, I hope they stipend in you. You tell them you, tell them you need some ducats, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple bucks, as my mom would say. Once I set up the Zoom, I will have a call in for people that don't ha actually have a computer. They'll just have a call in number that they can use. So, absolutely. You know, uh, <laughs> I did this. I decided to do this once Inslee made that uh, second shutdown, and I said, you know what? Seniors been shut down since March. We need to start getting together. No senior should be isolated. So, you know, spread the word. If there's anybody that, um, you know, that needs to have somebody check in on them every now and then. We're not a caregiver. We're not trying to take that place, but we're just trying to help people from being lonely if that's possible. Oh, right on. And that's what it's about. Cause yeah, nobody, we don't want anybody lonely. Um, you know, plan your Christmas gatherings on Zoom. You know, you don't have to, you know, tell them young ones to stay away with their germs, you know, plan yes. plan your parties on Zoom, you know, <laughs> and, and, it, and it can be, it, it doesn't have to even, you know, like I said, when my family gets together, there's 50 of us on there and we're all talking at the same time. And honestly, you can still hear three conversations and keep answering all of them. But uh, the day before, the week before Thanksgiving, my aunt, I was at her house helping her uh, fix her new computer and she found a stack of old photos and I took pictures of the pictures. And so on Thanksgiving, we were showing these photos of when the family went back to Africa on this pilgrimage and, you know, to <laughs> see these aunties in their twenties, all sling and swinging and hot. And, and so, and then to see the kids like, as toddlers, it's a lot of fun. So yes, it can be as fun as we need it to be. I encourage you also to, you're getting on Zoom, you're gonna be on camera you know, get done up because otherwise we're not going to come out of our house dresses if we don't um, have a reason to. So it's easy to have your picture on the camera, but it's much more fun to see people's faces. You get to see their smiles. And um, and so, yeah, you know, I look, I got lipstick on because it ain't smearing my mask. So <laughs> and believe it or not, I, I haven't been out in a long time, I use Instacart. I don't even want to go to the grocery store because I'm here in uh, Phoenix and, um, you know, they, uh, with the numbers spiking, the governor said, I really, really hope you'll please wear a mask. Dude, you're the governor. Mandate something, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, and as many seniors as, as we have here, at one point I went to the, I did go to the store and the only people with a mask on were me and the employees. And I'm like, these old people, like, do you realize there's a pandemic? So we really got to be safe, got to be careful. Um, yeah. Think about the vaccine and if you're going to take it. And um, 
you know, I figure by the time it gets to me, all y'all have will have taken it. So um, I'll know it's safe. <laughs> but I have friends who, you know, Dr. Mims at 92, she's waiting for the call so she can get it. And she said they could stick it in every hole. She want that vaccine. And she <laughs> want to stay alive and healthy and well. So um, I think I the know science, that's right. Yeah, I think the science, you know, our first thought is because it was uh, came through this administration. Um, but I think the scientists have actually been able to prevail. Um, the second, um, the second company, they seem to, their vaccine seems to be a little bit better, which is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Is it Mc, 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 McNair or McVeer or something? They seem to be able to prevent you catching the virus, but also to assist if you have it. So, um, lots of, lots of good stuff, no you know, well, you know, none of us are going to know the side effects.